When you think of iconic acoustic guitars, what model comes to mind? Chances are there's not many that pop right out, but the two guitars we're gonna talk about today were probably floating around in your guitar geek brain. Yes, we're gonna talk about the Martin D18 and the Martin D28 today. These guitars have history, they've got sound, they have this legacy that we need to celebrate. In fact, the dreadnought shape just just celebrated its 100th anniversary in 2016. And I thought, you know what? We need to get to dedicate an entire episode to the Martin D18 and the Martin D28. That's why I'm gonna kick off today's Acoustic Tuesday episode by sharing with you my five reasons why every guitar geek in the world must either play or own a Martin D18 and a Martin D28. So let's kick right into my first reason. And the Martin D18 and the Martin D28 they're Swiss army knives of guitars. Yes, it's true. The Martin D18 and the Martin D28 have been involved in nearly every single musical scenario you can think of. Now I know what you're thinking. Tone, I pretty much associate those guitars with bluegrass. No, 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 no. These guitars span well beyond the bluegrass genre. In fact, here we're gonna look at Michael Hedges playing a Martin D28. Michael Hedges was an amazing modern fingerstyle guitar. I think percussive fingerstyle, kind of one of the trailblazers. Yep, he picked a Martin D28 for his weapon of choice. And if you're thinking, well, what about traditional fingerstyle? Yep, here's Daniel Bachman playing a vintage, I believe it's a 70s D18 or D28. I actually can't quite tell because I can't see the back and sides, but that is his weapon of choice. And it sounds pretty darn good when played with that kind of American primitive guitar style. Next up, yes, singer-songwriters use D18s and D28s all the time. And when you think of singer-songwriters, you're probably thinking of Bob Dylan. Here he is playing a Martin D28. Yes, he chose that to sing and to songwrite on. I mean, come on, folks, the list continues to grow. And yes, of course, I'm gonna mention bluegrass. We've got Billy Strings playing a Martin D28. We've got Brian Sutton playing a Martin D28. We've got, who's up next? Norman Blake on the cover of his old and new album playing a D28. We've got, of course, Tony Rice playing probably the most famous D28 of all time. So yes, the Martin D18 and the Martin D28 are indeed Swiss Army knives of guitars. The next reason I think every guitar geek should play a D18 or a D28 is because of the history. When you purchase a D18, when you purchase a D28, even when you just play it, you take a step into that guitar's history, and it is a pretty amazing and entertaining history at that. In fact, the Dreadnought shape started way back in 1916, as I mentioned before, and throughout its journey to popularity, there's been twists, there's been turns, there's been detours, and lucky for us guitar geeks, there's an entire documentary dedicated to the Dreadnought. Yes, when Martin Guitars celebrated the centennial of the Dreadnought shape, they released a documentary called The Ballad of the Dreadnought. It's about a 45 minute documentary. No, we're not gonna watch the whole thing here, but I got a really interesting snippet that I think you'll find entertaining and a little bit thought provoking as well. Here it is. You could tell who could really play, you know, when you took their, their amps away and gave them something like this. Everything you hear from the Beatles to Led Zeppelin to the Stanley Brothers, there's Dreadnoughts on those records. It's just, it just it gets the job done. Now you saw three artists on that clip. Don't worry, you're gonna see one of them again. I can't tell you which, you have to stay tuned for that. But yes, indeed, the Dreadnought is just filled with history. In fact, the Martin D18 and D28 has gone have gone through many, many changes. To catch that entire documentary, it's actually available for free, and you can catch it at acousticlife.tv forward slash AT133. Invite the family to sit down and watch that documentary together. You can all become guitar geeks at once just by watching that documentary. All right, my third reason why every guitar geek must experience a D18 or a D28 is simply bass. Yes, it's all about that bass. Indeed, it is all about that bass. Megan Trainer was absolutely correct. The D18 and the D28 offer bass in spades. I'm talking the D18 offers this nice dry woody type of bass and the D28 offers this wonderful mid scoop kind of very present bass. And you're thinking, Tone, I, I, I believe you, I've heard that. But I'd love to hear an instrument that's a fine example of this bass you speak of. Oh, don't worry, I've got not one, not two, not three, but four fine examples from two of my favorite players. Yes, let's kick things off with Billy Strings playing a vintage 1935 D18. Thank you. 
know what you're thinking. You probably spit your coffee out saying, you know, <laughs> that guitar sounded awesome. But of course it sounded awesome. It's in Billy Strings' hands. Why wouldn't it sound awesome? Well, just to go ahead and prove the fact that D18s are indeed amazing and offer this robust bass, who would I to not, who would I be not to mention Molly Tuttle on an Acoustic Tuesday show? So I went digging and I found Molly Tuttle playing a vintage D18 at Carter Vintage Instruments in Nashville and here it is. the D18 side of the spectrum, that nice, dry, airy, crispy bass presence. Let's now shift our attention to the D28 side of the bass spectrum, and we're gonna hear some pretty robust bass out of the D28. I'm talking powerful. I'm talking chest-shaking bass. And let's, well, let's just go back to Billy Strings playing vintage D28 at Carter Vintage in Nashville. Now, for those of you placing bets on whether or not I was gonna mention Molly Tuttle again, for those of you who said I was, well, you just won, because here is Molly Tuttle playing a beautiful vintage D28 with monster bass at Carter Vintage in Nashville. <laughs> So yes, when it comes to bass, D18s and D28s, while they offer different flavors of bass, offer plenty of it. Let's move on to the next reason why I think every single guitar player should play a D18 or a D28. And that is the fact that D18s and D28s are the most imitated guitars in the market. Yes, you pick a brand. I don't care what brand it is. It could be Yamaha, it could be Siegel, it could be uh, La Patrie, it could be Norman, it could be, think of any brand. They have a version of a D18 and they have a version of a D28. Why? Because the recipe simply works. It's a fine combination of tone woods, Sitka spruce top, mahogany or rosewood on the back. I mean, come on folks, it's the most imitated guitar. You must play the original. But if you're thinking, man, those originals, those, those are pretty high priced, don't worry. I've come up with a list of my favorite models of, or my favorite uh, makes of D18 and D28 style guitars. And I think you'll notice they come in at a pretty fine price range. Let's kick things off with the Blue Ridge, <clears throat> excuse me, the Blue Ridge BR140. This guitar is one that I've been selling since I started working at a music store. And I have to say this, it is phenomenal for the price, for the look, for the materials used. It's a phenomenal instrument and I just got word we have some archival footage of a very young Tony, a young bearded, young flannel wearing Tony playing a Blue Ridge BR140. And if the, uh, the internet streaming service is working, uh, here it is. Dreadnought guitar. The first one we're gonna look at is the Blue Ridge BR140, which has a spruce top, Sitka spruce top, and mahogany back and sides. <laughs> Basically, when you look at uh, like a piece of mahogany, for example, mahogany is a much more porous wood than a rosewood is. So it tends to, rather than reflect the sound, it tends to absorb it a little bit more. So that's where you get that nice, round, warm bass kind of sound. From. Whereas as, as rosewood reflects a little bit more, so you get a little bit more string, a little bit more um, articulation in the sound. So the next guitar we're gonna- I mean, I was almost getting teary-eyed. Just taking a trip in the time machine, seeing that old flannel I used to wear. 
seeing a seeing a young Tony, ah, that was good. But but let's focus on the guitar, folks. Yes, the sound wasn't great in that particular clip, but that guitar really does a fine example of capturing the D18 vibe in a much lesser expensive package. And speaking of the D18, the BR140, we need to look at its counterpart, the Blue Ridge BR160, which is yes, a D28 uh, kind of version uh, in the Blue Ridge world, and it's another fine instrument as well. Both the 140 and the 160 have all solid wood, which I think definitely uh, kind of uh, contributes to the fantastic tone. Another manufacturer that's come to my attention in the last couple years is Recording King. And specifically, their two models, their two Bluegrass Dreadnought models, the RD318 and the RD328. Uh, both fine examples of a D18 and a D28 model. In fact, they've, they're doing a lot of really cool stuff with some older sprue, Adirondack spruce tops and even some thermo curing or torification, as we all know. Uh, so really fantastic instruments at a great price there as well. And then I think the instrument maker that takes the cake in terms of making a fine example of a D18 and a fine example of a D28 at a very, very affordable price is Eastman Guitars. I wanna cite the E6D and the E8D, both uh, the D18 and D28 version in the Eastman world, respectively. Uh, those two models are at a lower price range. I believe those have laminate back and sides and a solid spruce top. Uh, if we move to the E10D and the E20D, those are all solid wood and huge bang for the buck. If you're looking for a festival guitar, if you're looking for a guitar that offers that D18 or D28 vibe, but you just don't wanna break the bank, those are fine models to consider. I've played a ton of different Eastmans, and I have to say, their quality control has been off the charts lately, and uh, just the tone and consistency of tone has been pretty incredible as well. Uh, so very fine instruments, and again, a, hu a really nice price range uh, if you're looking for that D18 or D28 sound. Now let's move on to my final reason why every guitar geek must play a D18 or a D28. It's because the D18 and the D28 are like a measuring stick in the guitar geek world. How often have you heard somebody say, oh, that guitar sounds like just like an awesome D18, or that guitar sounds very D28-ish? Well, we use these terms freely, but when you think about it, we're using D18 and D28 as a measuring device for all other instruments. So as a guitar geek, I think it's our it's our obligation to have experience with an actual Martin D18 and an actual Martin D28 so we can then use those terms to further describe other models and what they sound like. So there you have it, my five reasons every single guitar geek uh, in this world, I was gonna say on this planet, I guess that's the same thing, needs to play a Martin D18 or D28, and if you're lucky enough, you need to own each of those as well. Now, <clears throat> I know for sure I'm probably leaving out some reasons why every guitar geek must experience a D18 or a D28, so if I didn't think of the reason that you have, please leave it in the comments below. I'd love to generate some discussion around these two most iconic guitars. And uh, if you wanna learn more about the D18 and the D28 and my reasoning, please visit acousticlife.tv forward slash AT133. All right, this week on Acoustic Tuesday, you've already learned the five reasons why every single guitar geek needs to experience a Martin D18 and a Martin D28. You're also gonna hear an artist whose weapon of choice is a D18. And a quick hint for you, it's not a bluegrass artist. Um, although he might be considered one now that I think about it. Well, you're just gonna have to stay tuned to find out. You're also gonna learn of three non-Martin D18s and three non-Martin D28s that you absolutely must try because these guitars have knocked my socks off. Through the wall, through my neighbor's wall, out into the street. That's how far these guitars have knocked my socks off. Yes, that's all coming up right after this. I'm Tony Polo Castro, and this is the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Guitar geeks, unite. Welcome to Acoustic Tuesday, episode 133. This is the show you're gonna learn about where you're gonna learn about acoustic guitars, acoustic guitar gear, discover acoustic artists, and of course, get inspired to live your very best acoustic life. As with all episodes of Acoustic Tuesday, I'm gonna share with you my guitar geek list for the week. And this week, yes, it is all dedicated to the goodness that lies in the land of Martin D18s and Martin D28s. Yes, it's all about the Martin D18 and the Martin D28. But first, before we dig into the rest of this wonderful Guitar Geek list, we have a very important item of Guitar Geek business, and yes, that is Guitar Geek trivia. This Guitar Geek trivia question, of course, floats around the topic of Martin D18s and D28s, and it's uh, involved implementing a very important feature. 
So here's your question for the day. What feature was offered on D18 and D28 guitars for the very first time in the year 1934? Was it A, slotted headstocks, B, herringbone trim, C, 14 fret necks, or D, split diamond inlay? Go ahead and ponder that, and at the end of the show, of course, I will give you the answer, but we've got a lot of stuff to get through. Holy smokes. Uh, I am excited to dig into the guitars that I think are fantastic non-Martin versions of the D18 and the D28, but prior to doing that, I wanna stay in the family a little bit. I wanna stay in the Martin family, and I wanna share with you an artist who goes to a Martin HD28 and a custom Martin D18 as his main weapons of choice. And before I said, you know, he's kinda, he's not really bluegrass, he's definitely more true country, but he is an artist of, well, immense properties. I don't even know if I said that correct. He's an artist that continues to reinvent himself. He is an artist that definitely has brought true country to light and supports it rabidly, if I can, if I can be so bold as to say that. Yes, it is Sturgill Simpson. Sturgill Simpson, if you have not heard him, you absolutely need to, and you will here in just a moment. Uh, but I first heard of Sturgill Simpson when he played a very small venue here in Bozeman from a friend of mine. I wasn't able to make it to the show, but I heard about it and I thought, why didn't I go to that show? It was one of those moments where like literally 15 people were there because the weather was crummy. And here I could have caught Sturgill Simpson right there in like a living room show. But I digress, I did a deep dive much later on and holy smokes, is he incredible. He is bred in true country music. He knows all the greats. He sings like an angel. He sings like an absolute country angel. And yes, he plays Martin Dreadnoughts for his main weapon of choice, a Martin HD28 and a custom Martin D18. In fact, here he is showing the crowd. He says, hey, hey everybody at this show, this is my custom Martin D18. It's modeled after a Martin Ditson 111. And this is, I designed this, check it out crowd. He's probably just thanking them, but I, I'd like to paint these scenarios in my mind that he's like, this is my custom, check it out. Uh, but anyways, let's listen to a couple of tunes by Sturgill Simpson and his band. First up, let's listen to a Water in a Well off of his album, High Top Mountain. Lord, no lifetime, move on. Get you out of my mind You find your way in To all my songs And every memory I can manage to find Someday if I'm standing on Some big old stage You're down in the crowd Trying to tell friends I used to know him when In your heart you know I ain't true somehow Trying like hell but it's too soon to tell If our love has all dried up Like water So he's playing a, a well-worn Martin HD28 in that particular clip. And yes, I absolutely love his guitar playing. That little slid chord fill and the little single note fills are fantastic. But let's just set that aside for a second and just talk about his voice. I mean, you wanna talk about a true country voice. This is, I could listen to him sing for hours and oftentimes I do. Uh, we'll get to the albums that I want you to check out by him here in a moment, but let's keep going down the Sturgill Simpson line here and listen to his song, <laughs> fittingly, Long White Line. Let's have a listen. I woke up, my baby was gone without her. Don't need no home, gonna hit the road. Start looking for you, the little long white line. Gonna hit the road, start looking for you in that long white line. Went to the bank to get my dough. I don't care where I go. Gonna push that rig to the push that girl out of my mind. If somebody Tell them I'm somewhere looking for you in that long white line. Tell them I'm somewhere looking for you in that long white line. Gonna push that rig till I push that girl out of my mind? I mean, come on. 
That is just an incredible lyric. I'm a lyric guy. I don't know if you're a lyric person, but I'm definitely one that when the line strikes me, it strikes me, and that's one of those lines. Now, speaking of lines, this next song, I was debating. I was like, Tone, should you include this in the Acoustic Tuesday show? It's kind of a family show. And, you know, I wanted to include this song because number one, I feel like it's a great song and it shows off Sturgill's versatility. But number two, I think it's hilarious. It's just kind of being, um, you know, when someone bestows an honor upon you and you really don't want it, uh, it kind of has that vibe to it, but it also has a little bit of choice language. So if you have any youngins in the room, just uh, tell them to put their earmuffs on or have them go get you a cup of coffee here for the next 30 or so seconds. Uh, but this is a song you absolutely must hear. It's off of the High Top Mountain album by Sturgill Simpson, which was released in 2013. The song is called You Can Have the Crown. Well, time my wife talks, so baby gets mentioned. I'm so broke, I can't pay attention to know how it tears me up to have to see her cry. Oh, I've been spending all my nights on the internet, looking for a clue, but ain't found one yet. Just a bunch of more palms, guitars, and other shit I can't find. Well, now, look, if you can hear me, won't you throw a damn dog a bone? If a devil shows up with a dead or deal, his whole soul's going down. Oh, I sing them real pretty, sing them real sad, and all the people in the crowd say, you ain't that bad. Well, now call me King Turd up here from Shit Mountain. If you want it, you can have a crown. See what I mean? I just had I had to include the song. It was one of my very early favorite Sturgill Simpson songs. And uh, I just wanted to share that with you because that's kind of how I, that was my journey to Sturgill Simpson's catalog anyway. And speaking of his catalog, let's dig into his discography, the albums that are available. Uh, High Top Mountain, which we pulled a lot of examples from, that was released in 2013. Next, Metamodern Sounds in Country Music, released in 2014. A fantastic album cover, by the way. Do you see the turtle? I see the turtle. It's there. Uh, next up, Sailor's Guide to Earth, released in 2016. Another fantastic album cover and a great album's worth of material. And then most recently released in 2019, Sound and Fury. Now, a special note on that particular Particular album. This is, um, I'll call it a concept album. And this is what I most admire about Sturgill's work is that he just follows his artistic vision. And uh, that's a great example because that particular album has a um, companion, I'll call it a companion Netflix uh, animation that goes along with it. It's about 45 minutes long where there's animation set to the actual album. And it's beautiful. It's, it's really a trip to see and, and a, a great kind of avenue for him to, again, express some creativity and get his, his ideas and message out there. And for those of you who might listen to the Joe Rogan podcast, I'll mention that his most recent interview with Sturgill Simpson really digs into that particular album, the approach, how it came to be. And it's a, it's a really fun interview. So uh, make sure to check that out. And of course, to learn more about Sturgill, check out those albums, see where he's playing, uh, visit his website. Please go to acousticlife.tv forward slash AT133. You'll see links to the albums, links to his website. And of course, you'll see those full performances in their entirety. Now I want to go back. I want to time travel again for the second time today and visit episode 131, where there were some wonderful comments left. Uh, kicking things off was uh, Dee Dee, and she was talking about hockey. And I cannot ignore any hockey conversation. She says, OMG, LA Kings goaltending sucks. Same as last season. Perhaps they need a tone up. Get it, Tone? I love to get called up to the LA Kings. I just don't think it's, I, I just, I, they've called me numerous times. I just, I don't have the time in my schedule. <sighs> it's a shame because I'm, I'm a really good goalie. Uh, <laughs> how long does it take to rebuild a team? As the saying goes, there's always next season. Gotta love them Kings. Go Kings, go. Love Acoustic Tuesday show. Well, thank you, Dee, Dee for leaving a comment and infusing the Acoustic Tuesday show with some much needed uh, hockey. Speaking of the NHL, we had a Zamboni driver sub in for the Carolina Hurricanes and bring them to victory. Uh, that gives me hope. It does indeed give me hope. Our next comment comes uh, from us to us from Mickey Underwood. And he says this, 
tuning in from my local hospital. I'm waiting for all my tests to be done so I can have open heart surgery to replace my mitral valve in my heart. This week's show gives me a lot, uh, gives me a bit of joy in this dark time in my life. Love you guys and keep on keeping on. Well, Mickey, on behalf of on behalf of everybody here at Acoustic Tuesday, all of the viewers, uh, we wish you the best in your recovery and surgery. We hope that things go smoothly and that you're back to playing guitar and joining us on the Acoustic Tuesday show when you feel better. Best wishes and please get well soon. Our next comment comes from none other than Boucher Guitars. Yes, they say this. Thank you for this review, guys. Really nice to see Tony play this Bluegrass Dreadnought. They're referring to the BG-52. And they also give a special shout out, a special thanks to SoundPure, who helped organize the showcase. Indeed, that guitar made a pit stop in Bozeman here on its way over to SoundPure on the East Coast, and we are very, very thankful as well. So thanks, Boucher Guitars, for setting that up. And also thanks uh, for making uh, some incredible instruments. Uh, I actually got a couple more you're gonna see today. Hint, hint, uh, one model really hasn't even been released yet, but you know, no big deal. We've got it sitting right next to me. You'll see it. Uh, next comment comes from Scott Hunter. And he says this, <clears throat> I've been playing guitar with great pleasure and at a skill level that I am satisfied with. I'm a Travis picker for over 50 years. And although I do understand the benefits of learning music theory, I'd like to make the case for theory not being essential for living one's best acoustic life. Indeed, the annals of acoustic guitar fame are littered with players who can't read music or know much theory. Is that an idea you can live with, Tony? Can you support my feelings at all? 100%, Scott. I'm a firm believer in whatever helps you play the guitar and ultimately have fun, that's what I want you to do. And if theory is not in that picture, please don't, don't worry about it. Right? The main objective for all of you guitar geeks is to have fun. Why? Because fun fuels progress. If you're not having fun, you put the guitar away and you don't play it for weeks, months, sometimes years at a time. If you are having fun on a daily basis, you will see consistent improvement. I guarantee it. So fun is the absolute paramount. It's the keystone to any guitar geek's journey because fun fuels progress. So Scott, I want you to just have fun. And if that doesn't involve theory, that's fine. Do I think theory helps? Of course it does. But if, if it turns off the fun meter for you, don't worry about it. Just continue having fun because that will certainly breed progress. And then last comment comes from Jabba1997. And he says this, quote, there's this thing, hold, there's this thing holding me back and it's Whitney. Best quote of 2020. Uh, <laughs> I want to thank you for quoting me uh, uh, and getting me in trouble with my wife. I'm just kidding. I actually, I shared that with Whitney and she was cracking. She was absolutely cracking up. I was talking about a guitar I wanted to buy, of course, and uh, Whitney is indeed in my way. She says, listen, Tone, if I don't get a honeymoon and I see you come home with another guitar, you're in real big trouble. And I've taken that to heart. I've taken that to heart. So all the new guitars that I've ordered since then have just come to the studio and I haven't even brought them home. Uh, just kidding, Whitney, if you're watching, I'm sorry. I'm just just joking. Uh, but I do wanna thank everybody for leaving their comments on episode 131 and all, really all episodes of Acoustic Tuesday. It is so cool to engage in discussion with you all uh, through the magic of, of YouTube and here in this wonderful Guitar Geek community that we've created uh, in the Acoustic Tuesday show. And speaking of that, there's one more thing you can do to support the Acoustic Tuesday show. And that is of course, get yourself some Acoustic Tuesday merchandise. Please head over to AcousticTuesday.store. And step number one, is to order yourself a piece of merchandise. It could be a shirt, hooded sweatshirt, socks, you name it, it's all there, check it out. The next step is once that order arrives, put your said merchandise on and snap a picture of yourself in it. This could be with your family, on vacation, with your guitars. It could be just a coffee cup on a table with a guitar pick next to it. I wanna see it because the last step is then to visit acousticlife.tv and submit it in the submit link in the top menu. You can go ahead and upload your picture, tell us your story, and I'll feature you on an upcoming episode of Acoustic Tuesday. And I keep dangling that carrot of uh, some Santa Cruz strings if you submit a picture of you and your Acoustic Tuesday merchandise. So just saying, if you submit a picture and you're sporting the Acoustic Tuesday, if you're waving that guitar geek flag, uh, you could have some strings coming your way. I'm just throwing that out there. I'm just throwing that out there as, as uh, pretty blatant bribery is really what I'm doing. Blatant bribery. I'm not, I'm not above that. I don't take myself too seriously. Uh, let's visit the mailbag because we had some wonderful arrivals. I'm gonna kick things off with a mystery item. Uh, this was something that just showed up. Uh, I didn't, it didn't have a note. It came from a university and it's, it's a magazine called The Great Plains Traverse. It came from Emporia State University. And um, 
It's all about guitars. So I'm, I'm thankful to whomever sent this, if it was indeed the university or one of you guitar geeks that watches the Acoustic Tuesday show, thank you so much. I'm enjoying this. It's a celebration of Mossman guitars. And I think because of my newfound knowledge from this, uh, we might be seeing them on a future episode of Acoustic Tuesday. I don't know, I can't predict the future. Uh, the next thing that, that came in the mailbag was, uh, came in a very large uh, box. I don't have it here with me because I took it home over the weekend. Fender actually sent me an Acoustasonic. Um, one of their new Stratocaster versions of an Acoustasonic. This is well, uh, uh, this is newly charted territory for me. I'm spending some time with it, uh, so I can't wait to report back my findings so far. I think the acoustic tone, well, it's really non-existent because the guitar is meant to be plugged in, but I have yet to plug it in. So I can't wait to do that and report back. Speaking of guitars, this beauty came in. This is from Boucher Guitars, again, on its way to Sound Pure Studios. This is the Boucher JP Comier signature model, a 12 fret cutaway that has wonderful tone. And of course, you'll be hearing it on a future episode of Acoustic Tuesday. I can't let all the cats out of the bag first because then we'll just have a bunch of cats running around. I, I'm allergic to cats, I can't do that. So we got to I got to I got to keep it keep it on the straight and narrow here. And then lastly, uh, one of the things that arrived in the mailbag, I don't have it here. It's actually occupying an entire closet at my house were about roughly a thousand compact discs and roughly 200 vinyl albums of my new album. Uh, it's entitled Rodent. I don't normally promote my personal music stuff here on the Acoustic Tuesday show, but I'm extremely proud of this album. It's something that I've been working on all of last year, and I finally got the guts to uh, let it out into the wild. And I just wanna let you all know that you can purchase it. Uh, you can listen to it on Spotify if you want to. Um, if you want to purchase a physical copy, a CD, or a vinyl record, please go to scratchfootacousticsplural.com. That's S-C-R-A-T-C-H-F-O-O-T-A-C-O-U-S-T-I-C-S.com. Uh, you can learn more about the album and, of course, place your order if you are so moved to do so. All right, moving right along, the segment that I am most excited about. I'm gonna go over some non-Martin D18s and some non-Martin D28s. Yes, these are guitars that stand out to me. And the reason why I wanted to do this is because some people say Martin D18, Martin D28, eh, it doesn't really get my motor running. But some other makers might get your motor running. So I've compiled a list of my three favorite non-Martin D18s and my three favorite non-Martin D28s. Before I go into this list, let me share with you the criteria. I had to have played the guitar for it to make the list. That's number one, because if I hadn't played it, how can I speak knowledgeably about it, right? So yes, I might be missing your favorite guitar, but if that is the case, if I miss your favorite non-Martin D18 or non-Martin D28, please in the comments below, let me know what it is because I'll go on a mission to try it out uh, because I absolutely love well, D18 and D28 style guitars. So this list was very difficult for me to make. There are some surprises on this list, some curveballs, and some guitars that, well, you just plain need to know. So let's dig right in. Let's start in the number three position in the D18 end of the spectrum. My number three non-Martin D18 is the Bourgeois Country Boy, a fantastic model that I've had the pleasure to own and currently own. Uh, my Bourgeois Country Boy was actually formerly owned by Courtney Hartman, formerly of Delamay, and wow, what a guitar. You wanna talk about a great model of uh, D18 style instrument. It's got the dry bass, it's got the projection, it's got this powerful, powerful projection. Holy smokes. Uh, but rather than talk about it, why don't you just listen to me play it? Here's the Bourgeois Country Boy.
Yes, that is the bourgeois country boy. Now, for those of you who love D28s, don't worry, I'm not gonna make you wait. I'm gonna do these at the same time. I'm gonna pair, I'm gonna go through these lists in a parallel fashion. That was my number three D18. Let's move over to my number three D28. And it comes from the Great White North. Yes, the folks at Boucher Guitars. The BG52 is my number three favorite non-Martin D28. This one I have the most recent experience with. It totally blew me away. It captured everything a Martin D28 offers and I believe much, much more. So if you didn't catch that review or if you haven't heard of this guitar, don't worry, I've got your back. Here's the Boucher BG52. Let's keep moving down the podium. Let's go to the silver medalists, ladies and gentlemen. The number two spot, let's head over to the D18 end of the spectrum. And this D18 comes from Sisters Oregon. Yes, the folks at Preston Thompson Guitars make a fine dreadnought. And I think their D18 style instrument is a, wow, I think it is one of the best D18 style instruments on the market today. I'm lucky enough to own a Thompson DCMA made with Cuban mahogany back and sides. I've played a model of theirs with Honduran mahogany, and I believe I played one with Sinker mahogany as well. Uh, so a lot of different uh, experiences with the Thompson folks, and wow, you wanna talk about that dry crispiness, that projection, that cutting power that a D18 offers. Uh, the Thompson DCMA has it in spades. I was gonna say in folds, but I don't think that's, that doesn't sound right. You don't want something in folds. You want it in the spades. Anyway, uh, the Thompson DCMA is a hell of a guitar and here it is for your listening pleasure. Talk about a guitar that has just bark and growl. I mean, if you look at it wrong, it just starts shooting sound at you. Uh, it's a fantastic instrument and I, I am very, very lucky to own it. Uh, now let's swing over to the D28 side of the spectrum. The silver medalist D28 uh, hails from Austin, Texas. Yes, it comes from Collings Guitars and it is their, well, <laughs> I think it's the Collings CW. I think they've called it the Winfield model, but let's be honest, folks. It's their Clarence White model. It's got the large sound hole, the kind of cheetah pick guard. Uh, I don't think they can call it the Clarence White for legal reasons, but I'll go ahead and do that for them. Um, it's an awesome, awesome guitar. I had a chance to play a, lose, a used one sometime back. It blew my socks off even further than the neighbor's house. I'm talking like if they were having Thanksgiving dinner, my socks ended up on the turkey. Uh, so the Collings CW uh, with Adirondack spruce top and rosewood back and sides is my number two favorite non-Martin D28. Let's have a listen. to see all sorts of different uh, time capsules of my my guitar review career here. I hope you're okay with that. Uh, varying degrees of facial hair, varying degrees of weight. Uh, it's one of the most interesting things having done over probably 600 guitar reviews at this point. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, it's, it's interesting to see my look well documented. I went through a weird hat phase. I thought I was apparently going to be in the Newsies or on Stomp or something, one of those paper boy hats. That, that died a slow death, um, but I'm glad th that hat's gone for me. It just wasn't my, wasn't my jam. Anyways, uh, let's move on to the, oh, I can't. I can't move on to the number one position because I'm about to break the rules. I have entered in a new category. Uh, it's the one and a half position. When you're looking at the podium, you've got bronze, third place, right? You've got the silver medal here, second place. And then I'm gonna add another step right not quite gold metal, but like in between silver and gold. Think of another precious metal we can put there. The one and a half position. And I had to add this because these guitars continually knock my socks off. They are fine examples of 
beautiful D18 style and D28 style instruments. Let's start on the 18 end of the spectrum. Coming in at position huh, one and a half is pre-war guitars, the D model played by none other than, well, you probably guessed it, Molly Tuttle. One of my favorites, she is playing a pre-war D model and here it is. I cannot say enough how much I want a pre-war guitar. Uh, not not a vintage Martin, I mean, yeah, of course I want a vintage Martin, but I'm talking a pre-war guitars company, even just that D model. Oh, I, I got a chance to play Eli West's single O pre-war. Wow, what a beauty. What an absolute beauty of a guitar. We're not talking about single O's. I just had to say that because my mind started wandering, having a hard time focusing today. A lot of Molly Tuttle references, so my focus is everywhere. Uh, but in the one and a half position on the D28 side is also the pre-war HD model. And I'm sorry to tell you, if you're playing the Molly Tuttle drinking game today on Acoustic Tuesday, first of all, you're probably hammered at this point. Second of all, it's not, it's just not gonna stop. So here's Molly Tuttle playing a pre-war HD model. We have ascended the podium. Ladies and gentlemen, we started at the bronze position, the number three position with the Bourgeois Country Boy and the Boucher BG52. We then ascended to the silver medal position where we looked at the, the Thompson DCMA and the Callings CW, the Clarence White model. Then we inserted the one and a half position, uh, uh, often misunderstood but equally worthy, uh, the pre-war guitars, both the D model and the HD model. I mean, holy smokes, now we are here folks. We are at the gold medal position. They're about to dole out the medals and I have the absolute honor of bestowing the gold medal, the number one position D18 to Wayne Henderson. Wayne Henderson is an incredible guitar maker. I never thought in my wildest dreams I would have a chance to play one of his guitar models, let alone a killer shaded top D18 style model. And uh, two years ago, when Trey Hensley and Rob Ikes were here playing at the Acoustic Life Festival, Trey brought his Henderson D18 style guitar. He let me play it. I was blown away. I had to capture it on video. Here it is, best D18 style dreadnought. That's not a Martin that I can think of. Holy smokes, you wanna talk about knocking socks off? This one blew my feet clear off my legs. I don't even have feet anymore. Here it is. Those of you spying around that video, if you saw a half empty bottle of whiskey, I took no part in that. I don't know what, I, that was probably just apple juice. Um, what a fantastic night, what a great guitar. I, I, like I said, never in my wildest dreams thought I would be able to play or have the chance or opportunity to play a Henderson guitar and I did and oh wow, uh, just plain wow. Uh, talk about power. I mean, I barely had to pick the strings and it was just throwing sound out. It was just it was easy to play, a beautiful instrument. So thanks Trey uh, Hensley for allowing me to play your, your guitar. Um, what an absolute guitar geek treat uh, for sure. Now let's swing over to the other side of the spectrum, the gold medal non-Martin D28. There's actually a tie. It's a tie from the same manufacturer. Yes, my gold medal non-Martin D28 comes from Santa Cruz, the Santa Cruz Guitar Company, and there's two of them. First, I wanna direct your attention to the under the radar model. 
the Brad Paisley model. The Brad Paisley signature guitar from Santa Cruz Guitar Company is a gorgeous instrument. It's a D28 style instrument, and they use the absolute most beautiful bear claw spruce top for these models. It has power. It has, if you're a heavier handed player, the Brad Paisley model is a fantastic match for you because you can dig in and this thing does not give up. It doesn't compress. It keeps offering sound. It's like a, it's, it's like a atomic weapon of a, of a D28. Fantastic instrument. And here it is in all of its glory. Again, made by. And another thing, it's understated. Unlike lots of artist models where their name is all over the place, you've just got this beautiful cowboy hat inlay on the headstock, the Santa Cruz inlay on the, the fretboard, and that's it. I think he's got maybe a signature in the label from what I recall, but that's it. It's a beautiful instrument. And while well, we're gonna stay on the signature line uh, train, the signature line of thought, also from the Santa Cruz Guitar Company, tying for the gold medal non-Martin D28, is the Tony Rice Pro model. Brought to you by Santa Cruz. It's a large sound hole, D28 style guitar. This one that I'm playing here has Brazilian rosewood back and sides. It is very much a holy grail in my mind when I played it. Uh, you wanna talk about knocking socks off? I couldn't even speak. This guitar stole the words. I had no vocabulary after I played this instrument and I'm still searching for it. I'm still trying to like relearn the words that were stolen to me or stolen from me by this instrument. Uh, this is the Santa Cruz Guitar Company, Tony Rice Pro. Here it is. Speechless. I'm speechless. I mean, talk about this has been this has been a medal ceremony for the ages. When it comes to acoustic guitar Olympics, this is the first medal ceremony I've ever participated in. I've had a blast, and I hope you did too. But I have to ask you a very important question. I asked you this right at the top of the medal ceremony. I'm gonna ask you this right now. What did I forget? What is your gold medal D18 or D28 style? That's not a Martin. What's your gold medal D18? What's your gold medal D28? Let me know in the comments below. Let's generate some conversation. I'll read them on a future episode of Acoustic Tuesday. Maybe we'll have to do a two-parter because I know there's a lot of non-Martin D18s and a lot of non-Martin D28s. I say we just compile a hell of a list for, for, well, for all of us guitar geeks. I think it'll be darn fun. Well, uh, the medal ceremony is over. Uh, if you want a recap of that list, the podium positions, uh, please visit acousticlife.tv forward slash AT133. Uh, you'll be able to see more demos of each of those guitars, see some more playing examples if you really wanna evaluate each one and see how I did on my rating system. Usually I, usually I don't rate in order of uh, importance, but I chose to do it today. I'm, I'm feeling good about it. I'm feeling good, I'm feeling confident and I'm not backing down. I'm, I'm very confident in my choices, but we have to continue on here. But remember, please, in the comments below, let me know what your gold medal non-Martin D18 is and your gold medal non-Martin D28. I'd love to compile an awesome list that I can take to Whitney and say, hey, Whit, I gotta try out these guitars because I might, I might be bringing one home. Uh, anyways, no, I, I won't do that, but. I don't know, maybe I will. I guess in my mind, it's like a fantasy. I'm like, hey, wait, let's go shopping. What's on the list? Oh, it's a bunch of guitars. Anyway, uh, we've got a very important order of business to conclude, and that is, of course, your Guitar Geek trivia. Uh, if you don't remember your question, don't worry, I'm gonna recap it, but yes, of course, it involves Martin D18s and D28s. Here is your question. What feature was offered on D18 and D28 guitars for the very first time in the year 1934? Was it A, slotted headstocks? Was it B, herringbone trim? Was it C, 14 fret necks? Or was it D, split diamond inlay? Well, if you answered C, 
14 fret necks, you're absolutely correct. In 1931, the Martin Company began producing Dreadnought guitars that carried the Martin name. Prior to that, they were making the Dreadnoughts solely for the Oliver Ditson Company. These Martin Dreadnoughts were designated D1 and D2. The D1, like the earlier Ditsons, was a mahogany body instrument destined to become the D18. With the D2, Martin introduced what may still be the most popular style of steel string guitar, the rosewood body Dreadnought. All of Martin's early Dreadnoughts had the 12 fret neck of the Ditson design. It wasn't until 1934 that D28s and D18s officially were offered with the 14 fret neck most considered standard today. So cool to dig into some guitar geek history. I absolutely love it. I think, you know, I think uh, I would love to start a guitar geek trivia night. Um, I just, I, I just don't know if there's enough guitar geeks to populate an entire watering hole to where we could have a trivia night dedicated purely to guitar trivia, but it's my idea. It's my idea, so if you steal it, you gotta credit me. Or if you know of a Guitar Geek Trivia location that actually has Guitar Geek Trivia live, um, gosh, you should let me know. My wheels are spinning now, like I wanna do that. I wanna go on a tour through the United States where we host Guitar Geek Trivia, and it's just a bunch of us Guitar Geeks hanging out, having some beers, having some bourbons, learning about guitars, answering questions. The prize would be like a, a trophy with a pick on it. I'll stop. I'll stop. I'll keep my brainstorming to myself, but don't worry, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Uh, but we are concluding today's episode of Acoustic Tuesday, the episode dedicated to Martin D18s and Martin D28s. Scratch that, let's just call it mahogany body dreadnoughts and rosewood body dreadnoughts. This has been quite the celebration. I can't believe that model has been around for over a hundred years at this point. Holy smokes. I'm talking, wow. That's pretty, uh, pretty good reason for celebration, of course. Uh, but we should, we should look to the future. We should see what's gonna happen next week on Acoustic Tuesday. And next week on Acoustic Tuesday, well, we're gonna kill two birds with one stone. And we're gonna learn that the early bird catches the worm. Uh, we're also gonna learn another important lesson. Uh, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. I don't even know what that means. Uh, and and lastly, we're gonna join together and learn that birds of a feather flock together. Tony, what the hell does this actually mean? Uh, next week on Acoustic Tuesday, we're gonna be celebrating the Gibson Hummingbird, another iconic acoustic guitar. We're gonna dig in deep to its history, who played it, and why it is indeed so special. So please, please tune in next week on Acoustic Tuesday. Remember, you can catch Acoustic Tuesday every single Tuesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time here on YouTube. And for your Acoustic Tuesday fix in between Tuesdays, please visit AcousticLife.tv where you can do a deep dive on anything I've ever talked about on the Acoustic Tuesday show. Thank you so much for sharing your time with me today. Thank you for being a guitar geek. And remember, guitar geeks unite. I'll see you next Tuesday. Take care.